to the Washington Tattoo Podcast, where we champion education, celebrate community, and unite the very best of humanity. Fueled by world-class military precision and cultural excellence, the Washington Tattoo produces unforgettable immersive experiences, creating an atmosphere for people, organizations, and businesses to connect, network, and build impactful relationships. We invite you to listen to this episode of the Washington Tattoo Podcast, where the world's musical traditions come to life. Thank you so much for joining us. Don, thank you so much for taking the time to chat today. This has been a long time coming and just want to say welcome to the Washington Tattoo Podcast. This is our first live in-person version of this. It took a while for us to get here, but so grateful for you to be here today. Mark, extremely very mutual, my fellow veteran brother in the faith. Uh, so much love, respect, and admiration for you and the Washington Tattoo and all you've done. I was so happy to be at the inaugural tattoo. What a beautiful gathering. And, uh, Thanks for doing this, and I want to thank Jesse on the other side to recognize <laughs> his skills there with the other setup. No, it's incredible. I mean, if you think about all of the fabric of our story together with veterans, with giving back, and honestly, always huge shout out to Jesse. Jesse oh, yeah. is making the magic happen behind the scenes. But I have to say, your story is so inspiring on so many levels because it's you know music, it's humanity, it's giving back, it's serving the country. It's, there's a faith-based you know side to it, and so if we could just you know start and unpack almost the kind of very beginning of it from your story, go to Louisiana. We're talking New Orleans. We're talking music, and we just passed Mardi Gras at the time of recording. So. Can you walk us back to your beginning uh, with music and what brought you into playing music? Sure, I'll be glad to. No, New Orleans, Louisiana, <laughs> New Orleans, Woodrow, Thibodeau, Bobby Boucher, and all that stuff. <laughs> uh, I grew up in a pretty large family, uh, 13 of us, mom and dad. We were loved. Uh, and I'm my mother's baby boy. Mom played piano, and uh, she was a secretary also, so the same principal, you know, um, looking at the not looking at the keys and all. So I remember her teaching me a little bit about typing and, and then listening to her play piano. One of my first interests was watching Lawrence Welk with my mother. Mm -hmm. That was pretty neat. Uh, so these men playing nice instruments, big, beautiful sound and all. And uh, I wanted to play drums first. I really wanted really? to play drums. <laughs> <Never Yes>. that. <laughs> and uh, my beautiful late sister, Geraldine Bro. Uh, said no, too loud. Choose something else. <laughs> That's to <what> happen. <laughs> so uh, I had this amazing principal named Sister Mary Kay Barella, St. John of Walk Catholic Elementary School, and she inspired me uh, to choose an instrument. And then a lady named is Peggy Bax, wife of Mr. Mike Bax, a trumpet mm -hmm. player, amazing trumpet wow. player, uh, came in and she demonstrated the instruments. When she played flute. It yeah. really touched me. Yeah. Uh, and from there, uh, I would go on to high school, St. Augustine High School in Orleans, Louisiana. I would get some um, lessons from Mr. Edwin Harrell Hampton, my bandmaster, and then I would uh, get some help from a Mr. Ellis Marcellus, who would refer me to Mr. Richard D. Harrison of the New Orleans, New Orleans Symphony. Wow. It's now Louisiana. So just a number of uh, serendipitous divine rendezvous. Yeah. And uh, 17 years old, graduated from high school, uh, straight into the army. That's incredible. It's funny that you bring up Ellis. I mean, the Marsalis family. <laughs> Neighbors. So incredible. When I went to undergrad in Louisiana, uh, the Marsalises came up to Northwestern State in Natchitoches. And I remember them working with the jazz band. Yeah. And I'm going to throw my friend Lane Dunn out there. Uh, Lane Dunn is a phenomenal piano player. He was a fine new alpha brother. Uh, but when he would play, Ellis would walk up and say, we're playing jazz, not, not rock Rachmaninoff. <laughs> so, <laughs> and it was amazing though, just to get that idea of you know, being in Louisiana, having a, you know, a hybrid of classical background and traditional New Orleans playing. And so, yeah, incredible. And so you, you you have this rich musical upbringing, and then you decide to join the Army. Yes. So walk me through what that decision was like. 
So after graduation, college, of course, was an option. At the same time, you have to know yourself, know your strengths and your weaknesses. I, I wasn't really ready for college. I had a lot of energy. I know I wouldn't have been able to focus on my studies much. And then an Army recruiter came, and also an Air Force recruiter. So I almost joined the Air Force band program, but the Army had a little more to offer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, wow, they're going to pay me to play music, and I'm going to have some discipline and structure, which <laughs> I need. Mm -hmm. So this is really a win-win, good situation. And sure enough, July of 1983. Wow, incredible. And uh, kept riding until July of 2013, 30 years. Well, congratulations. Thanks, thanks a bunch. Uh, and I congratulate you on your recent retirement also, <laughs> Sergeant Major Mark <laughs> Riley. Uh, who ever, ever thought? I mean, I think it's interesting to kind of walk back into this conversation of how you and I first met. Yes. <laughs> because I think we actually crossed paths before I was in the Army. Yes, yes, that, that, that was amazing. The Fife and Drum Corps Junior's Camp. Yep, uh, yep. Encouraging, inspired, educating our future, the future generations, as yeah. you just made a nice post about future generations. <laughs> uh, so yes, that was that was really a special time. Yeah. Um, it's a passing of the torch. Yeah. The, yeah. the true measure of, of a leader and a teacher is passing it on, encouraging that next generation, paying it forward. That's yeah. one of the terms I like to use. To whom much is given, much is required. Right. So I just want to make sure I set up the next generation for success. Yeah. And it warms my heart to see some of these students doing so well. Now, and you've done an amazing job at that. And so you and I met in the late 90s at this fife and drum camp, which was, you know, Dominic Huchia was yeah. there, yeah. Nick Antanasio was oh, there. Wow. And I was just, you know, along for the ride, I had just kind of gotten into school, had tried to, I'm figuring myself out at that point, but I remember meeting you and at that point in my life, the old guard was, it was the king of kings when it came to drum corps. It came, you know, from fight. It was the New York Philharmonic of mm -hmm. fighting and drumming. So you join the army and then somehow you leave Louisiana and then you join the old guard fight and drum corps. Walk me through that. that sure. Part. Yes. I initially went to the fifth infantry division band. Okay. Well, I put down a piccolo and picks up a shovel and and tr trenching tool to dig foxholes. <laughs> uh, not quite what I had in mind, yet it was a blessing in disguise. It showed me soldier musician mm -hmm. and set me up for some endurance and, and flexibility. So that man at Fort Polk, not far from your alumni, Northwest and yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um We would do some training in the field. Uh, we would play music out there, but we also helped with security operations. That was the only thing I knew of at the time. Mm -hmm. And then it came time to re-enlist, and someone said, why don't you go for Germany or Korea? Uh, Germany was about 18 months or three years, depending on what you choose. And Korea was one year, I said, I'll go to Korea. I have my option, they'll give me an option to go where I want to come back to, so I'll go to Fort Sam Houston, and I had all this in my mind. So when I go to the Eighth Army Band in Korea, I meet a beautiful young lady from South Korea. Yeah. And I'm standing Korean <laughs> stay long, and next thing you know, I'm coming back married with a child. Wow. Go back to Fort Polk. They offered me the band in New York City, but my wife was pregnant with our second child, and I, I didn't want to go to a big city not knowing things. Uh, and I, I felt more secure going where I knew. Mm -hmm. and then I saw the Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps in Texas on a mission. They were temporary duty. And I said, wow, that's interesting. That's, that's different. Um, I'm going to try that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a challenge. And then so uh, Andrew Frankenfield, my school of music classmate, because I did go to school of music, Andrew. I got a basic training. Yeah. And uh, she invited me. She said, why don't you try out for this? And uh, it was really a great experience. Little did yeah. I know the trajectory, I would totally change. Yeah, amazing. Well, and, and I remember doing White House arrivals with you. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Having on arrivals and being, standing out in, you know, 100 plus heat. <sighs> 85, 90% humidity, and you can't move for 45 minutes because the dignitary may be late. Yes. Oh, by the way, there's an extra award on yeah. top. We're to stand out a little longer. Oh, and somebody missed a certain cue, and we're going to have to change the entire sequence midway through. So, fun times. Getting flashbacks. <laughs> getting flashbacks. Spirit of America. Twilight yeah. tattoos. Yeah, just, just some amazing journeys. Uh, the, I also like the military bond of, of the soldier musicians, and I'm fellow musicians in the 
Navy Band, the Marine Corps, President Song, the Commandant Song, uh, the Air Force. We don't get to see much of the Coast Guard Band in London, Connecticut, but we did do something um, that had some joint bands together at George Mason University quite a few years. It was really neat, the Air Force ceremonial brass. But, uh, the camaraderie between military musicians is amazing. I want to give a shout out to uh, drum major of the Marine Corps Band, Wayne King, MSU graduate. Uh, we've had some great conversations. And a young Taylor Brownfield, yeah, uh, an yeah. amazing young drummer, uh, very inspirational brother in the faith. We've jammed together at Mount Vernon. So just so much to be grateful, so much to be thankful for. Well, it's interesting when you bring this up and this idea of military music and historically speaking, each of those major port cities would have had a very large military presence. So New York, Chicago, Louisiana, and specifically in New Orleans, when you talk about just the musical heritage there, and you think about the Mardi Gras parades, you think about the Marine bands playing, and these high school kids seeing and rubbing shoulders and elbows with these military musicians, there's so much depth there of just culture. And I really always, for me, New Orleans is my favorite city in, in the United States. And it's just because there's this melting pot of American culture. And I think talking to you about this and seeing you know, what you've done in your military career, you're now really representing something quite unique now, I think, at Mount Vernon. So could you walk me through maybe that you know, end of army transition into kind of what you're doing today? Sure. Uh, this year, 2023, is my 10th anniversary, we call it my Mount Vernon anniversary. <laughs> when I retired from the Army in 2013, I immediately uh, had a little break. I had some leave saved up and off, but I would start working at Mount Vernon that summer also. And um, that's kind of an interesting story. There wasn't a musical slot there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a history interpreter slot. So I just wanted to be at Mount Vernon and learn some history and add some music. But you don't always get what you want right away. You don't always get it the way you want Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so the idea is to get your foot in the door first. Mm -hmm. So um, I remember uh, after I retired, I did apply. They offered, and I was glad to accept. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a nonprofit organization. So, you know, it wasn't the big bucks, mm -hmm. but it is a nice, I can be content. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for my military pension and all. And the other part was just the atmosphere of education and the environment of such a diverse group of people. So I'm, I was the history interpreter. I am still a history interpreter, but now I am also a resident fighter there. So I talk about music from enjoyable entertainment to critical communication. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alpha Company, fighters and drummers, yeah. we can relate to that. Ceasefire, uh, these different calls, drummers call, um, mm -hmm. assembly. So I'm trying to educate the youth on the importance of music during the Revolutionary War. So the program I do, I kind of have a couple of catchphrases. Music then and there, here and now, in between, before and after. The importance of music. Uh, I'll have a setup of various instruments on the table, uh, from fifes to flutes to whistles to pan pipes, international. Mm -hmm. I have a collection of uh, 100 plus flutes. Some were given to me, some I purchased, and I've given some away also. And that's uh, what I'm doing at Mount Vernon. I'm loving it. I'm living a dream. I have to pinch myself sometimes. <laughs> and uh, it was really neat when yeah. I saw you at Mount Vernon walk into the garden uh, a while back. Yeah. And, uh, we had a meeting there. So one of a kind job. It's amazing. I mean, so Mount Vernon really is the belly button where a lot of folks will have known about George Washington they'll hear these iconic stories of the founding fathers, but now you're interpreting this history to that next generation. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's gotta be some special moments that you had there. And um, what, are, what are some funny moments maybe that you oh, have with some uh, yeah. kids or something sure. like that? So, <laughs> I have a journal, and uh, Jesse will probably see a journal over that little purple book. And it, I journal every day. Some things are fun, some things are educational, you know. I'll, I'll talk about the visit of the Ukrainian ambassador. Uh, but one fun thing, just a little side note, because you need stuff to keep you alive. Uh, people bring dogs there. We're, we're very pet friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, so they'll walk the dogs. And there was this big, giant uh, Tibetan mastiff. Looks like a bear. They had a lot of hair. And the, uh, thank you very much, Jesse. <laughs> and uh, the dog is friendly. I go to pet it. It's not very warm with me, but you know, it lets me pet it. And then a little girl comes up and 
Pets the dog. And the dog just loves this little girl. Just you can see the difference. And uh, by the way, the dog's name is Samson. Mm -hmm. You want to guess the little girl's name? Delilah. Delilah. <laughs> Samson, you might want to be careful. Yeah, so right. just, just moments like that of uh, meeting people from France, Germany, Russia, England, yeah. Israel, Iraq, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, China, Korea, Brazil, South Africa, multiple countries from South America. We have citizenship ceremonies yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. They're amazing. And then our uh, George Washington will come out and welcome them to the country and give little lines like, I see that flag has. Uh, an excessive amount of stars on it. I think you're being a little optimistic there. <laughs> uh, Love it. Just the, uh, the various uh, colleagues I have. Yeah. We, yeah. Uh, our job is to make each other look good. Yeah. Well, you you really helped me out. This is a personal story. This is going back to Spirit of America in Pittsburgh. Oh. <laughs> so this would have been maybe 2010, somewhere in there. And I had an Aunt Michelle, who was my wife Corinne's aunt. And she was originally from New Orleans. And I remember being out there with my grandma, my, my mother-in-law now, Grandma Carmen, we call her. And it was this beautiful moment where you and I were out doing just a, you know, a human engagement side yeah. of the house, playing some music together, meeting everybody. But I think you helped me seal the deal with my now wife and my in-laws. So I'd have to say thank you because if you maybe weren't out there, maybe I wouldn't have been so lucky well, to have landed such a great you, wife. You, 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 <laughs> shout out to lovely lady Corinne and your handsome little Hudson and beautiful Ella and Logan also, Hello, yeah. a beautiful family. Um, and I do want to give a special shout out to your dad mm. and your late mother. Thank what you. a beautiful lady. Thank you. I remember your promotion, uh, the three of us together, and it was. It was kind of emotional, I was saying, that's my brother and my other mother. Yeah. Um, but your mother, just a beautiful lady, and I will yeah. always cherish that. You may not know this, but she and your father came to Mount Vernon one time. Uh, you were working, and uh, Logan was there with him, and we had the most beautiful heart-to-heart. -heart. I will never forget that. Amazing. And we were talking about you, and uh, this just, uh, it was powerful. I'm even getting emotional thinking about it. <laughs> the family's a beautiful thing. Yeah, absolutely, and I, and I feel like you have to always put those perspectives in place. And I think you and I have had many conversations about purpose, why things happen for a reason, you know, why things don't happen for a reason. And I will always remember my parents trucking me along all across the Eastern seaboard to fife and drum events. And I'm always so incredible. And now my mother looking down on us, you know, what we're yeah, doing yeah. today and my father, you know, so excited, you know, with, with life and, and uh, doing all sorts of great things. But, we always have to find this balance yes. of, you know, what is the priority at the moment? And when it comes to family and it comes to profession, it comes to, you know, finding time to, to take a break maybe. Yes. Um, so walk me through, you are a busy, very busy man. What are, what are some things that keep you balanced? Sure. So my journal helps keep me balanced. Uh, uh, this journal starts off with a picture of my lovely family. Love it. I love it. Thanks. And uh, my faith, love, joy, peace, Jesus, I wish you, um, I, uh, I'm not a preacher to someone, but at the same time, I'm not ashamed to recognize my faith mm -hmm. and uh, finding the time. So I like that's therapeutic. That helps me it. to keep things. Uh, personal. This journal has, look, a little king cake. <laughs> I, I like that term in there. And, uh, how about this one? Uh, President Zelensky, this is before the Ukraine war. He came to visit Mount Vernon. Wow. Things like that. Um, educational stuff. Uh, someone wow. gave me some pounds from England, yeah. the late Queen Elizabeth. and. Well, you're on that job with us when we played for the Queen. Yeah, yeah. So, it was. Um, uh, and bringing it back personal, you know, flying home and just let my wife know I love and I appreciate her and I thank her for her sacrifice and my sons having one on one time. Mm -hmm. So, we do things as a family and then I'll do things with each one of them individually. Right. All right. So, choosing between what's nice, what's necessary, what's needed, what's good, better, and best. Right. Uh, Earlier, I may have mentioned, you know, driving to do, go to some little type reception or some engagement, and all of a sudden it's like I heard a little sweet voice saying, uh, turn around and go back home. Mm -hmm. right. I didn't want to, but um, I'm glad I, I followed that uh, sweet voice because I needed to be home at the time. Right. Um, there would be lots of things to do. Um, my wife was very happy for me to come here today and be able to do something like this. So it's a great compromise and swap off because I support my wife. She's a government worker. She'll be going to school and I'll be home. So she'll be doing the TDY. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, and what a trade-off. And I think when you bring this perspective of priorities at different seasons of yes, your life, yes. because those priorities always seem to shift. Yes. And you started this great journey in the Army. She was with you all yeah. around the world and traveling. And now you're here with Permanent Party, yeah. you know, in Mount Vernon. But you're also using these different conversations as tools on how to connect with other people, yes. which I think is a super powerful trait that you have. Mm -hmm. And not just music, but story, using the power of story to connect with other people. And then, by the way, I can play the heck out of this flute too. <laughs> so, I mean, so when you, when you think about kids and you think about the next generation and passing that forward, what are some, what are some ideas or what are, what maybe a phrase that you would have to inspire that next generation? Yeah, I, I use the phrase, uh, once again, to pay it forward, uh, not just giving them a fish, but teaching them the fish, mm. uh, leading by example, choosing my words carefully, and just uh, trying to speak to their heart. As a true teacher, it's not just here to hear, but heart to heart, listening. Right. Uh, the children are just so open and honest sometimes. sometimes Honestly, embarrassing saying things. Right? <laughs> Humbling. Um, I was playing something where they really need having fun, and one little kid goes like this. <laughs> That's funny. I get that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and then another kid comes up and hugs me out of nowhere and says, Play again, please play another song. Yeah. So I. Um, people ask me, How many people have you played for? What is this? How, how, how much have you done this? And so a lot of time my answer is, I'm not sure, and I really don't want to know. I just want to make sure I'm having an impact. If I should know, it might cause me to be puffed up with pride. I don't want to go there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, matter of fact, when I'm walking around Mount Vernon, sometimes they won't even see me. They'll just hear the fight. Yeah. And that's fine. I want them to hear the sounds of revolution. <laughs> it's much bigger than me. Uh, a lot of them will automatically color the flute or pickle or someone. I don't know. This is a fight. Right, it's in the flute right, family. Right. It's a flute, but when you think fight, think revolutionary one, things like this. And also I want the kids to respect other people's cultures and races and all. Yeah. And um, I have a jacket over there. When Jesse gets a chance, you can swing it by and appreciate it. So we have this ceremony at Mount Vernon that's, that's kind of tough and kind of sensitive. Thank you very much, Jesse. Uh, I'll get to this jacket, but just a segue. We'll have children come around and of course they'll see the house, the mansion, and then we'll go to the grave of General Washington and we'll pay respects. And then we'll go to a place that can be uh, very emotional and very painful, but yet there's also a piece there. It's the Slave Memorial and Cemetery, mm -hmm. and we have mm -hmm. children there. Wow. So this is where I get a chance to teach the children. Slavery wasn't pretty, mm -hmm. but yet we use this space to remember, reflect, respect, and honor their lives. Mm -hmm. I have friends who are white, black, Hispanic, Native American, Asian, mm -hmm. and um, they were part of Mount Vernon, named like William and... and Frank Lee, brothers, Lucy, Nathan, Molly, Caroline Brown, and Prisha, she was the only judge. I say their names. I want to make it real to them. I think one of the toughest questions I got at Mount Vernon, it wasn't one of the Googleable intellectual questions, it was more of emotional. <laughs> right, right, right. Why are you working at Mount Vernon? You're black. There was slavery here. Mm -hmm. I've gotten this question from black and white, to be honest with you. And uh, I wanted to reflect on that for a while before I just, you know, I wanted to think before I speak, you know. Yeah. I thank them for asking that question. I said, I'm working here to remember their lives, and I'm working here to promote forgiveness, reconciliation, mm. education, mm. and um, just making people aware. And then, I, this is something interesting, I kind of flip it on them, not in a bad way, but I said, what if there weren't an African American working here? I imagine someone would say, why don't you have an African-American working here to tell that story? Oh, wow. So my point was, you do you, I do me, we do us. You're doing something I'm not called to do. I mean, I have those skills, but I pray and I believe this is where I'm supposed to be. This doesn't make me any less or any better than you and vice versa. Right. Let's just have some mutual respect and all. And sometime when I'm there, a little segue, I'll wear different things and different pieces of clothing to do what I call ice breaking and bridge making. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I wear this jacket sometime with flags from around the country <laughs> and um, different things. And I look at the old fife and drum. Oh, yeah, I, I love it. Yeah, this goes back to 1986 in Korea. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Eighth Army Band, I was there. And each patch has a story, Fort Hood, the Calvary. Um, that's really what I'm about. Um, Sometimes you don't have to say a word and people will walk up to you, Fort Benning, follow me. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend was a tomb guard who gave me this. Amazing. I'm not tall enough to be a tomb guard. <laughs> this is Fort Polk, the 5th Infantry Division, honor guard, our patch, we wore that. Military mm -hmm. District of Washington. So these are the things that really um, help and encourage me and inspire me. And of course, the kids are attracted to something with a lot of colors. Right, right, right. You know, the Screaming Eagle, uh, one of its airborne, uh, air so known. And so I can go on and on about this jacket. When you're on the Fort Drum trip with us, yep. 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 climb the glory, your 10th Mountain Division. Yep. Yeah, this is a lesson in itself. I'll finish up with the School of Music. Nice, nice. Have you looked at this patch carefully, the notes on it? What are the notes on it? No. A, B, Army Bands. No. That's I like that. incredible. <laughs> I like, like that. Little cookies in there. Little, yeah. yeah, little Easter eggs. Yeah. So I have to bring this up because I feel like what's really so powerful about this story and your journey, especially when you just brought up about, you know, this really special moment at Mount Vernon, is that you're an educator and your interpretation of that history is also letting people who are no longer here that are alive today then be educators yes so the enslaved that are buried there are actually having an impact today oh, yes. because of what you're able to do as an interpreter for people to educate them and a lot of what we talk about is having these conversations today and saying we want to have the hard conversation but a hard conversation without empathy is a is an unwinnable one yeah. and i think what's be beautiful about music and beautiful about literally having an empathetic conversation an authentic conversation is taking something that's hard to talk about putting yourself in that other person's shoes which we may never really be able to do but if we could shed the skin or maybe melt some of the ice of that hardened heart to understand someone who's completely different than us. Mm -hmm. That is such a powerful move forward for very, humanity. Very. And for me, it's such an honor to not just to be sitting with you here, but to know you as a friend, to know your heart, mm -hmm. and to know that you have this impact on other people, and we're actively changing the world with every interaction. Yes, yes. It's so special. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'm humbled, honored, and blessed. Honestly, it's, um, I'm at a loss for words some time. Uh, here's a moment I had at Mount Vernon, an older white lady at the Slave Memorial came to pat me on my back and said, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I understood her sentiment and mm -hmm. inside my mind, I'm saying, that's very nice of you. Um, you didn't enslave me. Mm -hmm. I'm free, I'm educated, um, but I get that. Uh, I don't want that to be this false sense of guilt also. See, it mm -hmm. has to be balanced. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I've experienced racial discrimination, but yet I've also experienced racial harmony and reconciliation. Mm -hmm. People are people. I was in Korea. I saw racial tensions amongst one race themselves. So it's back to people being people. Uh, I play Amazing Grace there sometimes. People will sing mm -hmm. along. I play Kumbaya, Come By Here, My Lord. Mm -hmm. I play Steal Away to Jesus. I play Michael Row the Boat Ashore. Yeah. The music can speak volumes, transcending ages, racist, racist cultures. Uh, we had one young lady who was African American, Native American, right mix. So, right, right. And we found Native American artifacts at Mount Vernon. Amazing, it's amazing. And at that point too, it's about the tool that you're using to use as a voice. And yeah. if you use the wrong tool, yeah. the wrong person at the wrong time, it can get kind of dangerous. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> part of uh, part of the training was you know when to speak and know when to listen and disengage. Yeah. Some right. people come with a preconceived idea, you know. Well, wasn't he a good slave owner? Well, is there a good slave owner? Exactly. <laughs> uh, slavery, slavery, we, we don't condone it or justify it. Uh, I respect uh, General Washington. I work at his house. He was a good man, a good leader. He was not perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, and we don't idolize him either. So the, the thing is to keep things in perspective. Uh, that's, that's like a whole nother podcast. Yes. <laughs> uh, but, but in closing, it, 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 what I'm looking for is that as I get excited and heated in this in this discussion in a good way, yeah. uh, it's just reaching out and having some empathy and back to the children because that's what my heart is, the future generation. I was so blessed when you put that little tag up with Hudson playing the drum. <laughs> um, I talked to boys and girls about uh, young drummers and fifers in Revolutionary War. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I think it's Willie Johnston, 11 or 12 years old, Civil War, Bella Wow. Amazing. Incredible. 
It's at the Army Museum. A little girl asked me about women in the Revolutionary War. Mm -hmm. I said, why don't you Google a lady named Deborah Sampson? Mm -hmm. now, I don't know if you've heard of Deborah mm -hmm. Sampson. No. Deborah Sampson is like the Mulan of the Revolutionary War. Wow. She dressed up and disguised herself as a man. Wow, incredible. Later on, she would be discovered about a year later, some injuries and all. Yeah, yeah. So there's just so many untold and hidden stories out there. Yeah. Um, we're just scratching the surface right now, but it's need to be at the right place at the right time, yeah. uh, sharing history. That's incredible because, I mean, when you talk about story, we all have our own story. Oh, yes, yeah. and everyone is proud of a piece of their story. And we talk about the power of music with children. And I often bring up in you know music class or band class that kids sometimes don't come from the greatest homes. Yeah. And so music to them is this outlet. Or people even today who are suffering from PTS or TBI, that musical outlet, it provides community, it provides identity, it gives them story, it gives them a way to connect with others around the world. And I feel like between our conversations next, you are always looking to find new ways to connect people and bring them together. So what would be, what are some things on your horizon at the moment that you're looking at? I'm constantly updating my little PowerPoint slideshow. I don't know if I've emailed <laughs> it to Jesse and you yet, but I will. It has different um, little quotes of Fife and Drum. It has current day things. It has some fun educational things. So going out to schools and communities, also, I'll play a senior citizen home sometime, memory loss. Mm. Music is amazing. When I play for some of the senior citizens who are going into dementia all the time, so I'll play a song and they'll start singing along. And, wow. and uh, my late mother passed away of all time, so that has a special place for me. Um, so it's to just be prepared, have a plan, and be flexible mm -hmm. uh, and be willing to adapt. Yeah. Uh, Knowing the difference between the detour and the distraction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, sure. I've struggled with both of those. <laughs> and there's divine detours, and then there's me, look a bird distractions. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's my plan. But now I'm going to flip it a little bit mm -hmm. on you. And I want to thank you for getting this Washington tattoo started. And tell us a little bit about this because <laughs> I went to the inaugural tattoo, and this is neat. I got to put down my fife. Mm -hmm. And I got to listen and enjoy. This was therapeutic for me. Mm -hmm. Musicians, we do a lot of giving, but sometimes you have to, excuse me, receive. And that was the, the winery, Manassas Bowl Run. Mm -hmm. That was that was really awesome. And this is just the beginning. It's just the beginning. I remember the <laughs> countdown. So now uh, it's not just about me, it's about us. Um, <laughs> tell me the Washington tattoo. <laughs> I love it. This is a first. This is a first for me on this cut. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> No, it's super exciting. Um, you know, you, you, you decide you want to do something in your life and you start to look at all the things that have created your story over years and now decades. And I just felt I had so many great friends that could do so many great things. And you start saying, this is a platform for people to put their expertise and their gifts out for show. And I feel like that's part of this whole idea of the Washington Tattoo is to actually share everyone else's gift. Yeah. And so if I could help facilitate that, yes, I love to drum, yes, I can keep playing, I can keep teaching, I love those things, but to make the biggest impact possible, yeah. what does that look like? And I'm gonna go back on this. This is, I, I'm gonna blame T.D. Jakes for this. <laughs> and if T.D. Jakes ever listens to this, I'm blaming him. So I was listening to one of his sermons and he was talking about your level of faith and your depth of faith and how much faith do you have. And based on how far you were willing to jump was your depth of how much faith you had. And he said, what's the craziest thing you can think of? I was oh no, I don't know. I, no, I could probably put on an international tattoo. And I went, this is, that's pretty crazy. So I immediately started thinking about it, writing down, how would I break it down? Yeah, S1, awesome. <laughs> two, three, four, who are the people involved? And at the top of that list was Billy White. Oh, of course, Billy and, White, wow, what a great person, and, nothing but love and respect. Absolutely, and so I, I you know, think about it, and, I, and almost, I think it was probably two days later, I get a, a text message from Billy, hey, let's go for a run, I have a business proposal for you. <laughs> so I call him up on the phone and I said, wait a minute, I may have a business proposal for you, is the word international involved? And he goes, yes it is. And so at that point, this is probably 2016, 2017, Sir Melville Jameson had been on me for a while. Why does this not exist in Washington? So there had been this momentum there. But to move it forward, we had our first event, big event, 2022. Yes. It's getting awesome. bigger in 2023. We already have plans for 2024. 
And we're targeting 2026 as the semi-quincentennial. Sight and vision. That's what I'm talking about. And I want to give a shout out to uh, Billy and you, two amazing, awesome sergeants major, whom uh, one of my favorite, uh, you are fighting and drumming by the the old guard monument. Right. I just love that. uh, I remember when Billy auditioned for the Fight and Drum Club. Amazing. I met him at Hotel Company. By the way, he's the dinosaur. He's the last Hotel Company. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're watching this, Billy, uh, but, uh, it's so neat. Uh, we have such a great relationship. His lovely parents, uh, his young brother, Charlie. Yeah. Um, yeah. His, his beautiful children. Taylor's born on Yorktown Day, October 19th. Julianne is born on July 4th. Yeah, it's amazing. And lovely lady, Julianne. Julie, how are you? Um, <laughs> see, when I'm talking about relationships like that, yeah. but uh, so when people compliment me, I thank God, I thank them, I thank God, and then I thank the people who have inspired and encouraged me because I didn't get here by myself. Yeah. Um, I am a stronger follower than leader. I have Larry Kenley, but I prefer to support leaders. Mm. So when I see Billy and you, I just see great leaders, and to me, that's just strength. Leaders need followers, followers need leaders. Know your place. There was an old model, lead or follow, get the heck out of the way, something like that. <laughs> right, right, right. So I want to be in the way. I want to be a part of the solution, not a part of the problem. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I, I'm so grateful. Matter of fact, I wrote an article a while back, quite a few years, in the company of Pipers and Drummers mm-hmm. thing, and I gave some shout outs. One to Billy and one to the late Susan Moser. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, wow, we, what an amazing human being. Lady soldier, mother wife, just. Yeah, I mean, the loss that we experience, but the community coming together also. I think it's so powerful. And honestly, Don, I think your story is so gripping. It's so compelling. And, you know, the people that are going to watch this, you know, and listen to it, we really want them to take away how music can be that tool for so many things. And I just want to say thank you so much for the time today. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to thank Jesse again. I was actually a little nervous doing this podcast. I know we talked about doing a virtual one, but I wanted the energy in the room. And uh, this is just an amazing location. Uh, I want to thank you again, and I want to salute the Washington Tattoo. And uh, I know we're going to see, we could have talked about this, we could have said this, we could have said that. But we said what needed to be said. And uh, I thank you so much. All the best. So, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate it. Hey, everyone. This is Mark Riley again. We want to share a great opportunity with you to get your business name out to our listeners. We are looking for individual episode and yearly sponsors for the Washington Tattoo Podcast. So if you love music, history, and want to support military veterans, please take this step with us and consider being a sponsor. For information on that, please email marketing at the Washington Tattoo.com.